So they'll be calling you a radical. It's going to be a huge weekend in trying to break the Wattis curse here. And so my podcast, you know, I did the game last night. Weber State, it's historic what's going on. We're trying to break the Wattis curse. I'll help all you NBA scouts out. By the way, the tennis on stage right here on Saturday. This will be the weather conditions. Whoa, from Georgia. Ain't Maine, but... So the air quality's poor here. Well, it's going to get me going. So, but I want to talk about Jerry Carding last night. Now, I'm going to help you NBA scouts out a lot. I've been here for decades and days. You know, the only reason I'm still here, I have to go to the hospital every day. I got cancer when Lillard was playing here. Me and Damon were friends here. And I planned on moving to Vienna, to Austria, you know, and but... There's anti-nuclear activist environmentalist, but I got leukemia and I'm tied to this hospital and then had open heart surgery. But I want to talk about, you know, we go from hard hats to crowns in the NBA. But remember, we have 13 players in this last few years that are playing in the in Europe from this program, basketball program. We'll walk over to the D event soon and talk about this. I think Jared Harding's even better than Damian Lillard was at this point in his career. You know, of course, Damian, we know what he's evolved into. He's a beast. And if you don't think I know how to evaluate talent, you go ask for Andy Ray. When he was recruiting Damian, I remember shaking his hand. Same with Joe Bone Boy, whatever. What do you think, Kevin? Because I'm friends with him. He knows I've been at Weber State basketball since 1963. So... The old gym right there. This is important. Jared Harding's going to play in the NBA. He's going to be a superstar in the NBA. Last night, we were huge underdogs. They're young. They're struggling because they've been hurt. And I say he was in the boot. He didn't play that Utah State game. He didn't play. He's this good. So last night, you know, the struggle was on. I mean, they just can't get in sync. Whatever. You know, they're turning the ball over. They got talent. They're young. Lots of talent. They're really young. Second half, because I talked to Jared. I talked to him all the time. He's got a mind like Damian Lillard's. He's Damian Lillard's got a brilliant, brilliant, strong mind. I knew that from young. So is this young man. I'm like, it's gonna have to be your team. You're gonna take care of it. But he's been hurt. So get this. He pulled his groin. They came back from Florida on Friday. God, this air quality is bad. I can taste it in my tongue. Worst air quality in the country. So, Randy said he didn't think he was going to play. So, you know, he gets a little better practice, a little better. It's struggling. That game's a dog fight. So, this is what's so historic. Weber State's historic program. You know, Boy Soldier, Revan Nonhart, Justice Thigpen, Damian Lowe has never won in Utah County in the history of the program. This story, you, I, of course, BYU cheats. You know, that's who they played. They haven't won at SVUC. By the way, Dick Hunsaker, coach there, he played here. Dick, great coach, great player. You know, the coach. So this is important because Mad Dog, the Mormon madman from <laughs> Stanford, is coaching them now. They were 14-point underdogs, I think, last night. Speaking of that, I remember when Lillard, I told my friends, because they're gamblers and they were headed out to winter, I said, you better be betting Weber State. Oh, well, well. this is when he was a sophomore. Going to play BYU. He says, Jimmer, 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 Jimmer. Oh, he'll light him up like a Christmas. I said, you better bet on I think it was the Tulsa game. They're 12-point underdogs. That's the game he broke his foot in a couple days before he got a smoke Jimmer, which he would have. He was good. Well, here. I knew it. I told... Randy, try to forget, this, 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 guy's gonna, this young man's going to play in the NBA. I used to tell Damien all the time, there's a video I'm going out about Fukushima, blah, blah, blah. He's in the video. We're on the campus at the same time. When I got cancer, the only people that were halfway nice to me on this whole campus was Randy Ray. He's a great mentor to young men. That's why I like him. Look, I mean, look how Damien's turned out. He gives back. He comes back, of course. I told him, Damien, don't forget about me when you become a... Superstar in the NBA. This is before anybody dreamed he'd be in the NBA. Anybody. I did. You know. Jared Harding's 
I think even more advanced than he is at this point because he's got that great shot he's developed. Four years playing for Randy Ray. Randy Ray is a fundamentalist. Hardcore, he's an old freaking school fundamentalist coach. He's X's and O's. I mean, this guy, I mean, I, w I don't think I could play for him. He's, I bet he, I mean, whoa. So he's got a pulled groin. Second half, with a pulled groin, he scores 27. They win. He just took that game completely over. Then the other players started to respond. This team plays defense, they rebound, they just, they've been out of sync because he's been hurt. Look out, that's all I gotta say. You know, so it's a story because they never won in half. I mean, so we're trying to break the Wattis curse. I'm trying to break the Wattis curse. What's the Wattis curse? And if you don't know about the Wattis curse, so we'll go back to Mad Dog Matheson, who's coaching them. The Mormon at Stanford. Remember their number one, Montgomery, Montana? Remember him? Number one team in the country. The only reason Gonzaga is a super powerhouse, Stockton played here. I remember that game when he played for Gonzaga at Weber. He had a good game. I sit with Frank Layden at the games a lot of times right here, and I've been doing the play-by-play. -play. We podcast. We need a platform into Europe. We're working on it. We're getting some into the Europe, you know, because there's a lot of fans over there, European basketball, blah, 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 you know. And I do it with another old-timer who's a walking, talking Weber State sports historian. And that's what we, because they've lost it. These guys aren't from here. Randy, you know, Jay, Annie, they're not locals. We are. And so we want to get, you know, teach our young men, men and women. So, 99, you know, I'm working with a big one. I'm a student professor then. We're in Seattle, huge underdogs. I says, I knew they'd win. I told the fuck, they'll kill them. North Carolina, I knew they were that good. Well, they smoked them. Next game, they play Florida, who Haslam was on that team, Mike Miller was on that team. You know, that great team, Dupree was on that team. We were had them beat. I was at that game, me and Dave Sackowitz. So Dave Sackowitz, who missed the famous free throws here against Tarkanian in the day in the 60s, he and I are buddies, the seven-footer from Brooklyn, from uh, the Bronx. So we're sitting there, there's a foul at the buzzer. They're down by two, they're gonna win this game. No, Jackson's gotta make three free throws. He makes, Sackowitz got up, did not just go out into the foyer of the old Seattle arena. He walked down the street. <laughs> He made two, missed one, they lost an OT. But the next game was Stanford and Mad Dog Matson and Gonzaga. And I've been in a lot of arenas, including the Jazz and that tin box they, when they tore down that great Salt Palace. The Salt Palace was the greatest. Larry Bird's words, not my sound, lighting, magnificent gym. So is this one, by the way. Built by the same contractors, the same people, back when they built stuff in this town the state. Gonzaga upset him. I never in my life have been in an arena like that, and I've been in a lot of arenas, including NBA Finals, including World Series, you know, all of it. I never. I thought the lid was going to come off the fucking building. And they beat Mad Dog. That's so this, the curse ended last night, the Utah Valley curse. They haven't won there ever in, you know, they're 0-5 against them. So they played out at BYU in a few days. BYU had a great game against Utah overtime game, you know, and so we'll keep people abreast. By the way, the guy who should have been the superstar in the NBA was Ruben Nemhart. Of course, he got with that asshole Sloan. By the way, I'm friends with, you know, Johnson, who coached here. He should have been the head coach. If he'd have been the head coach, Sloan would have stepped his hard head ass, predictable ways off and let Johnson coach, who coached here. They'd have rings. They'd have banners, championships. Sloan was too predictable, but, you know, Gene Vischer coached and played here. Dick, the great Dick Monta, coached here. You know, so, but Nemhart got the 10-day contract with the Jazz. We're seeing right, but his son's playing right now, I understand. Randy recruited him, but he ended up. That 95 team, when they beat Sean Resbert and Heath Coates and him packing, that Iverson beat. They lost on the Hail Mary. I mean, I think he shut Iverson down to three points, Ruben. Ruben missed that front end of that one-on-one. -on -one. The Waters curse is very real. Who knows where this program would be if he'd hit that free throw? Because that team was that good, they might have won the whole thing. I'm telling you. You don't think teams like that can win the whole thing. You don't know nothing about this arena because 
How about when Jimmy Valvano cut down the nets in this arena? Yeah, the cancer guy like me. Beat Ralph Sampson right there. Cut down the nets. And so this is important for all you young athletes and everybody. So, Jared Harding, I'm telling you, is going to be an NBA superstar. Mark my words. Mark my words. I've known it for a while, but he's really improved. He's got that shot. All young athletes around the country, you just need to be praying for one person. And, you know, I was a young athlete. I ran the half mile with Ed Eisenau. He ran for TH Bell, ran for Walquist here. He's the Olympic coach. We've been talking about the boycott of the 2020 Olympics. Rakati Iki is the most famous young athlete in the world, or the best. Probably the best 18, 19 year old athlete on earth. I'm thrilled. Six gold medals at the Asian Games. She born on 4th of July, Tokyo. Fukushima, Fukushima, Fukushima. Now, this is real important because Joel, our athletic trainer here, who's the shit, he's the greatest. Been here forever. His young assistants, Yo and the other one, are both from Tokyo. You know, they're young men, they're fantastic. And, you know, we've been doing a lot of work together. You know, I've been keeping the stats for Andy. We're having a little problem with our podcast, this and this. But Rakata Iki has AML leukemia. She got sick in February. Six gold medals, world record holder, shattering records all over. Literally the poster child for the 2020 Olympics. We haven't heard one peep, one photo, anything her now for 90 days. And I know, because I was there, I know the cycle. I asked Damien, he, the only person that was really nice to me at a central line, I'd walk over here. Damien Lillard's best game in that arena, that a bracket buster against that Arlington, Texas team that was good uprising. That's when the scouts found Damien. I was sitting with him, I had a central line hanging out my jugger with a nurse with me. Came out of the bone marrow transplant. Oh, did he go off in that game? But Montana got the home game up there. Of course, they were ahead by 20 the year before to Montana in here and lost to this Johnson kid. Again, the Wattis curse. We got to break it. It's time. The main game last year, the Wattis curse. Who's the Wattises? That's the Nuclear Energy Crime Center who built the reactors at Fukushima, Japan. It's important that we know this. You know, the D family who did this, they're American can. Where's your can? So get your can out, Kev. Are you going to flip your can? Oh, yeah. That's why I give my can award. This is important because this is a European player that played 95 on that team. 99, 99, 99, 99. Made in the USA. This is important. Come on, Cameron, hang in there with me. We have a player in Vienna right now. We have a bunch of them. I think Jeremy Sieglins may be playing in Austria right now. It's, I was just in Vienna. Vin, we went in Vienna. So that's the last bookstore. Damien, he wore one. O for Ogden, Oakland, Oregon. What about Fukushima, Damien? Made in China. The bookstore gave it to me to do the games. So let's flip the can and then let's walk over to the Olympic Queen. Okay. Oh, nice. Let's break this water's curse, right? Right? It's time. It's time. It's time to break this water's curse. That's from the original protest at Fukushima, Japan. You know. So I graduated right there in that building, the number one school business in the country. I was a student professor. There's a photo, great photograph of me and Mikado, the heir to the Japanese world family. Vienna. I mean, what's the odds? Yeah, that's where I used to get a lot of information in the early days of Fukushima. You know, this world's small, so back to Japan. So what? the first NBA player of color. Oh, University of Utah? Nope. That was after the national titles at Weber State. Yeah. Not this gym. 25th Street, the vacant gym. So it's important we do this. So you scouts, mark my words, he's that sharp in his mind. He's that good in his mind. But this whole thing where we turn these in slow, I said at the Damian Lillard alumni game, and I'm friends with Damian. I did the play-by-play. -play. He walked over, he talked to me. You know, he had his own, con you can look at my video. He uh, had a contest, you know, it's his, that's his idea. And they all come back from that 95 team. I mean, Harold the Arsenal Show was here. 
We'll go talk to Randy if he's back, I'm sure. But the game last night with a hurt groin, 27 points in the second half. But anyway, Damien's got a contest, three-pointer, half-quarter. You know, three guys on each team. They're all alumni here. He comes over and talks to me, high-fives me, walks out, hits his three-pointer, first shot, half. So the game starts, he goes in, he hits six half-quarters in a row. Remember, he didn't have a jump shot here. I mean, maybe he did, he didn't tell you, but he's a workout. I've worked out with him and watched his famous, famous workout routine. Whoa. But Damian Lillard's a beast, and I knew that immediately. I shook his hand. He's got these beast, strong, huge hands. And I remember when he, uh, I first saw him under the basket, post up, and he just sprung out of the gym and dunked. He's a physical beast, and he's developed that shot. Harding, he's tiny Nate Archibald. I'm telling you, he's that good. I mean, you can ignore him like they did Damien. They ignored Damien on this campus. The school didn't do anything. You know, Jimmer, Jimmer, media, standard examiner, what clowns. They're a freaking joke. You know, KSL did it. I mean, it's, it's a disgrace. They ignored him. The school did too. They did nothing for him. But as his interview, he says, well, you know, I used to walk around here. I was friends with people. I was part of this community. You know, and I learned to love it. What's not to love is about as far as this, you know, this campus. It's a fucking gem, by the way. If none of you ever been here, this campus is a gem. So here's the Olympic rings. We were supposed to get speed skating. What did we get? <laughs> Curling. You know, Stevie Nicks in there, all these great bands. Not no more. There's the rings. So stay in tune it. Go to the hospital, get something to eat. You know, do my work. It's going to be a big week here. Let's break this fucking Wattis curse. So, I did the game down there. 27 points in the second half with a pulled groin. He just took the game. He scored half of Weaver State's points. And I think, you know, Randy, he doesn't like to turn guys loose like that, but, you know, because he's a hard player, but I think he's going to have to with these young guys. What a joy to get a play and watch him, these young players, because they have two All-American recruits. They have the, the strongest recruits in the history of the school. Five stars, point guards. They have this uh, Cunningham. KJ and Jarek Jordan, who wears 23, you know, so they're both freshmen. They have a player from the Ukraine, Yalti's been here door twice, you know, Kozak from the Czech Republic, and they have the, God, what a game he had, the big guy from Arizona last night. I mean, so pray for Kadiiki. Let's all pray for Kadiiki. She has not been hurt for 90 days. So I talked to Jarek, I know Jarek good. You know, and same with the Weaver State football team. Josh Davis, white boy from Alda High School. <laughs> uh, Going to play freaking tailback in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's he's a beautiful guy. I mean, I tell him, you remind me of Steve Young. You run like him. You look like because he's such a good-looking kid. Down-to-earth, smart, articulate. So a bunch of local players we have on this football team. You know, the kicker's an All-American. I'm friends with him. He didn't even play high school. But Jay Hill's historic turnaround, what he's done here, I can't say enough about it. It was so corrupt, the worst losing program in the country. Jay Hill's own works. <laughs> this team won three home games in freaking three years when I got here. He says that still now. Oh, he knows. What he's been able to do here is unbelievable. So, young players, you know, we were got blown off the court up at Utah State. Jarek wasn't on the floor. He was in a boot. The game's in Florida. I know how Randy rolls. These are young players. Watch out for this guy. I called it on Damian Lillard. I'm calling it on Jarek Harding right now. He'll be a first rounder. He should be a first rounder in the NBA. If everything goes right, which it will, it will. Rakata We need to pray her for her. Boycott the 2020 Olympics. Stay in tune.